this is Ian Bennett with West Coast Fire Training, and we're here in Midwest City with uh, Brian Brush and his uh, Lone Star Tactical Burn Building. And today we're gonna talk about how to minimize your heat exposure as the ignition officer. This is a really important ex uh, subject because while we don't think about a instructors being at high risk during training, especially in fixed facilities in high repetition burning, one of the people who suffers the most is often the ignition officer. They're in there for a long time, lighting fires, repeatedly loading. So how do we protect ourselves from thermal insult? How do we protect ourselves from damaging our gear, crazing a face piece, melting a helmet, and taking heat over time? So there's several simple principles that we follow to minimize our heat exposure. The first, and it's a simple one, but it's, and, and it seems obvious, but you see people not doing it all the time, is you gotta get low. As, and our rule is unless we're gonna light the package and leave immediately, if we're gonna hold the torch on the fuel package for any sustained length of time, our instructors are on our knees. So rather than holding the torch on the fuel package here like this until it's going the way I want it to, I'm gonna be down on my knees with the torch on the package. This keeps my head and my upper body out of the convective currents. Most of the flame is up top, so it also minimizes some of my exposure to the radiant heat. This is super important. Uh, just by elevating myself in the space to a standing position, I take so much more thermal insult from that convected currents. So once I've got the fuel package going the way I want it, it's self-sustaining. I don't need the torch anymore. I'm still low. I'm still down on my knees. Now I need to use shielding and distance. Just like any type of radiation, that thermal radiation from the fire is going to lower if I'm farther away from it or shielded from it. So for instance, if I'm going to manage the airflow from the door over there, well, there's a wall right there. I stay low, I move behind the wall, and now I can manage the door behind me. I can keep an eye on the fire behavior from the fuel package, make sure it's doing what I want. If I have a team that's down the hallway here, I can communicate with them visually, but anytime I don't need to directly interact with the fire, I stay back. But if I need to see what's going on, I take a quick look. Most of the time I can just check the overhead for fire and gas flow and suddenly I know what's going on with the fuel package. Another critical piece, is a rule that we have for our instructors is don't play with it. Again, this sounds simple, but once we've built the fuel package, we've built it the way we want it, things are looking good. I like the fuel package and now the Excelsior isn't going as quickly as I would like. Or the pallet starts to slip down a little bit and so the package isn't looking as good as I thought it would at first. It's very tempting at that point for me to come in, try and fluff up some of this Excelsior, readjust a pallet, readjust a piece of OSB or another piece of the fuel package. These micro adjustments have almost no impact on the fire behavior long term, but they expose me to a huge amount of thermal radiation. Once, once the package is going, if I walk up and try and move this pallet, I'm literally inches away from the flame. Now, am I gonna get burned? Probably not, my gear can take that. But over time, I will get saturated much, much more quickly. And what does that do to my resting heart rate? What does that do to me cardiovascularly? It's just not good long-term or even short-term. Walking up and doing micro adjustments has caused people to craze their face pieces, has melted helmet shields. It's just never worth it. If the package starts to go out, fine. Get the torch, bring it back in, get low, restart the sequence. But if it's just taking a little bit longer or something doesn't look exactly like you want, be patient, it'll do it eventually, don't play with it.